it's Kathleen, the allergy chef, and today, tacos! I'm gonna show you guys how to make a really great taco seasoning. Now, for those of you who don't know, kids who just flashed me the look of, I can't believe you just did that on camera, but oh well, it's a great day because tacos! So, what you need to make homemade taco seasoning, you need salt, a selection of spices, and a mason jar. Now, you can use a, a jar that's smaller, especially if you don't make tacos very often, but we use taco style seasoning pretty often in our house. Um, so I'm going to opt to use a nice big jar. Now, I also have some maple sugar here. You do not have to sweeten the deal if you don't want to. Down below, I'm going to put a couple of different options for taco seasoning so that you can build your own creation of happiness. And what I personally like to do is start off with small ratios and then you just scale up from there. So whatever floats your boat. But let me tell you a little bit about why these seasonings are the ones that we use. So first off, the brand is important. Not every brand um, is from top eight for your equipment. So we only vouch for Spicely as a spice brand, but if you have a brand that you prefer, go for it. So Chipotle and chili are both going to bring some heat to your taco. Now our kids don't like heat. They like flavor and spice, but they don't like heat. So in our blends, these levels are pretty low. You can absolutely increase yours. Paprika, especially when smoked, adds an amazing layer of depth. To add extra depth when you go to make your tacos, add some liquid smoke as well. Black pepper, just to add a little bit of flavor. This one's completely optional. And garlic. Now, normally you'd also add onion granules if you'd like, but for this particular taco mix, I'm leaving it out because oftentimes I will use fresh diced onion in our taco mix and I'd prefer to just use the garlic and then actually use whole onion. You can actually leave out the garlic if you're low FODMAP or if you're uh, allium free or just allergic to garlic. Uh, it will change the flavor a bit, but because we have a range of spices to choose from, you can pull the ones that you can use and use the right ratios and you'll still be okay. Ancho chili is one of my absolute favorite spices to use. You'll see this a lot in our recipes. And the reason why is because it's very kid friendly. A lot of kids, at least American kids, my kids, don't like spicy foods. It's too hot for them. Ancho chili brings the flavor without the heat. I can get away with using several teaspoons of ancho chili in one recipe, but Lord forbid, if I use more than a quarter teaspoon of chili powder, everybody's like, Dinner is so spicy tonight. What did you do that was so different? And I am not exaggerating right now because I did it the other day just to test my limits. So next up, we've got mustard. Now, many people have mustard allergies, but for those, let's say you have a garlic allergy, but you can have mustard. See where I'm going with this? We bring in some flavor from somewhere else to make up for the fact that we can't have this flavor over here. Now, if you can't have either one of these, you still have an amazing set of seasonings to choose from and cumin. Now this is the secret ingredient to a lot of um, just ethnic type dishes. It's that little hint of, huh, that's really nice. I can't put my finger on it. That's nice. That's where cumin comes in, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna smell each one of these and give you guys a little brief description of what it smells like. Ooh, it's got like that hint of nice spice but almost fruity and floral. Well, fruity just a little bit. And that was the chipotle. The smoked paprika. It smells kind of woodsy, and you can definitely tell that there's a little bit of smoke there. I'm not going to smell the black pepper because that will make me sneeze. Garlic. It's very pungent. So it's got a nice, sharp smell, if that makes sense. Um, you can tell that it's going to bring a very specific flavor. And the ancho. Oh, it's mildly woodsy. It's a cross between these two. If you were to smell these two and then smell this, you'd go, oh, they're like cousins, I can totally tell. And the mustard, interestingly, has a very, very, very mild smell. Very mild. Okay. And the chili powder. Ooh, well, that's interesting. This reminds me of tacos I ate as a child. Very, very interesting. So 
pungent, bright. Oh, smells some chili powder. Last up. Now, the cumin smells like the earthy cousin of chili powder. That's what it smells like to me. So now that we have all of that out of the way and you guys know what they smell like, let's talk about some common flavor pairings, okay? So these are all from the nightshade group, okay? If you can't do nightshades, you'll have to leave these out. For those of you who can do nightshades, oops, they're great options. This is what's left if you cannot do nightshades, okay? So you've got the black pepper, the garlic, uh, onion if you want, mustard, and the cumin, okay? Now, if you can't do seeds, you'll be leaving out the cumin and the mustard. And if you can't do bell pepper, paprika is derived from bell pepper. Now, what's interesting is um, when you buy ground chili powders like these, it's not the same name as the original fresh powder. I have this really cool chart that shows you the name of the original chili and then the name that we call it once it's been cooked, roasted, flavored if needed, and then ground up and sold. Um, so it's a fun little fact. And let's see here. I guess that's everything. Let's get started. So you'll need a clean, empty jar with a lid. You don't have to use a mason jar. Any old jar will do, I promise. Honestly, I picked this one because it was really cute. And I also like that it has a wide mouth, so it's easy to pull out um, several tablespoons. Like you can see that a tablespoon measuring spoon will fit into here very nicely. If you're just one person, a smaller jar where only one teaspoon fits makes more sense because you're only making enough for one or two maybe. But I'm always cooking for a lot and the freezer. So a tablespoon is where it's at. We're going to start with the salt. So I have all of the salt added and now I'll add my maple sugar. Remember, this step especially is completely optional. I just happen to know how my kids like their tacos. So the maple sugar is totally added and Kid 2 is just telling me he really likes seeing this visual where you can kind of see the way it's coming together. Now what I'll do is go through and add each of these spices. So I'm going to start with the, I thought that was, here it is. I'm gonna start with our chili powder. Remember, this is the one I'm not allowed to use a lot of. So I'm going to be using a quarter teaspoon for the entire jar. That's it. Remember, I have spice babies. So if you don't have a spice baby, please, please, please use more. Same goes for the chipotle. I'm only gonna add a quarter of a teaspoon for this entire jar, okay? Now, smoked paprika. Now, my kids love smoked paprika. Like, love it so much that if I cook with it, they'll walk up the stairs and they'll go, I smell, you used smoked paprika, didn't you? They do this to me, and it's so cute. Um, they love this stuff. So I'm gonna make sure I put plenty of this in our mix. Now I'm going to add our cumin. Remember, this is just that hint of, huh, this just really tastes good, but I can't quite put my finger on it. So I'm going to use one teaspoon for the entire jar here. And I'm going to have some mustard. You don't need the mustard, but I personally love using mustard when cooking uh, meat. It's a really great flavor that's produced. Now for a different take on taco, add a little tomato paste. If you use the mustard, mustard plus tomato paste, really great flavor pairing. Next up is our ancho. This is another one that I can use a lot of because the kids really enjoy it. So I'm gonna get this added and I'll show you the next step. Now I have our garlic. Now, if you want to leave this out the way I leave out onion, if you want to put in fresh garlic the way I'm going to put in fresh onion later, by all means, go for it. In fact, oven roasted garlic with your taco meat. Oh, obviously I can't eat it, but still, oh, it would be so good. So I'm gonna add the garlic. And the final touch is just a little bit of this black pepper. Um, and you can see, because I put it on that side, doesn't that just look so cute, you guys? Oh, so, so cute. So this is how you build a basic 
taco season. Your final step is to mess up your gorgeous sand art. Just grab a little knife. Go all the way down. Oh, looks so cool. Look at that, you guys. You can see the little pattern emerging. And you're going to mix this up briefly. First, we're going to mix it, but then we're going to shake it. Now, if you have a severe corn allergy like I do, mix by hand, do not shake. And the reason why is because the lids of mason jars can sometimes have uh, a corn residue on them. And you don't want all of your beautiful corn-free seasoning all over the corn residue. Now, since I can't eat any of this, I've got it a little bit mixed. I'm going to put the lid on. And now we shake. Shake, shake, shake. And that's how you do it, guys. Homemade taco seasoning. I hope you use it, enjoy it, love it. Let me know what you think and have fun with it. You don't have to use the ratios that we use. Remember down below, I've added just a few suggestions for you, but seriously, you guys, this is gonna be good. Hey, it's me again. I just wanted to show you guys this taco seasoning in action. So here I have one pound of organic ground turkey. And remember I said I love using fresh onion. So there's fresh onion back there. And I'm just going to break this up and let my taco seasoning do the heavy lifting. Hey there, thanks for watching today. If you liked the video, leave us a comment. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell.